Welcome back, AP Calc AP students. Mr. Record here from Avon High School, also representing my uh, esteemed colleague, Mr. Kyle Meunier. We're going to be taking a look now here at topic uh, 6.10, which is really getting down to the very ending of Unit 6, a very long unit at that. And we're going to talk about what most likely will be the most challenging integration techniques that you're going to learn throughout the entire curriculum of AB Calculus. And they'll set the stage for some of the techniques that you might see if you were to go on to either take BC or possibly a Calculus II course in college. We're gonna take them slow. We don't want you to get too intimidated. Just keep in mind, you can do these. So let's take a look at our first one, which is called integration, <clears throat> excuse me, that requires long division. And I know that that can be kind of sad. You see, you see the little bit emojis crying there. Well, long division isn't as bad as you might think. So let's take a look here, move my camera out of the way and see what we've got here in this problem. The introduction says, occasionally we may be asked to integrate a rational expression whose numerator's degree is either greater than or equal to its denominator's degree. When this occurs, note, always has been underlined and bolded. I probably could have put it in capitals as well. I really wanted that word to stand out. We're always going to rely on our algebraic technique called polynomial long division first. And the good thing about that is you don't ever have to make a determination. Should I divide or should I not divide? You always want to divide if you have a fraction that you're integrating and the degree on top is larger or even if it's equal to. And we certainly have that here comparing the three to the two. So really there are two processes. There's the long division process and then you've got the integration process. So let's go ahead and do that long division. If you recall, your long division asked that you take your numerator and that's the expression that you put inside of your division box. Now you want to be very careful because if you happen to have any missing terms like the squared term, it would be in your best interest to put some placeholder there like a zero coefficient to occupy that position so everything lines up really nicely. The denominator, you can do the same thing. If we have an x term that's missing, we can put a 0x to denote that, and the denominator is always what you're dividing by. Sometimes we might refer to this as the divisor, and this inside the box is often referred to as the dividend. All right, now we just go back to our long division roots kind of remember maybe doing this back in grade school when these were just numbers. The philosophy is the same. Now you're going to start by focusing only on the first term of each expression. And you just simply ask yourself, what is it that you would multiply this x squared term by to produce this 3x cubed? And the answer is 3 times x. You take that 3 times x and make sure that it multiplies by each term in this divisor and you write the result underneath the expression you used as your dividend. In other words, what was in the box. So we have 3x cubed, which we'd expect, 0x squared, and then 12x. In typical long division fashion, you are now going to subtract those results from each other. So when we do that, we end up with 0, 0, and then 2x minus 12x is negative 10x. You're going to go ahead and bring down the next term. In this case, we only have a plus 5. And then you would normally repeat the process. But in this case, you can't repeat the process. You cannot continue. You are done dividing because your divisor is a power of 2, and what's left here is a power of 1. 
So once that happens, this is actually going to serve as your remainder. And we can call it that. I don't even think you need to write this down, but that is really what that is referring to. But I don't want you to say something like remainder negative 10x plus 5. That's just silly because that's not going to work for us. What you have to do is understand that this remainder is the numerator of a fraction that contains the same denominator divisor. And so what I would suggest is we just add negative 10x plus 5 over what we divided by. Now, just really briefly, sometimes students get confused by that. Maybe they have forgotten that that's what's happening here. So if I just have you guys think about dividing 3 by 2, what's 3 divided by 2? Well, isn't that just 1 with the remainder of 1? But I'm just asking you to simply add that remainder over what you were dividing by. So 3 divided by 2 is just 1 plus a half, which is the same as 1 and 1 half. 3 over 2 makes sense. You're doing the exact same thing here. But the only thing different is that you certainly have variables. And I do keep the plus here that joins those two quantities, whereas here we could get rid of it and write it as a mixed fraction. OK, well, that's the long division process. Now we get to move into the integration process. And for that, we know that this integration problem that we've been working on is the equivalence of integrating 3x, basically it's this result that we have on top, plus negative 10x plus 5 over x squared plus 4. Now things are going to start to roll for us. In the process of performing this integral, what we can see here is that uh, we have a 3x that's fairly easy to work with. And then we have this negative 10x plus 5 over x squared plus 4 that, uh, let's be honest, is not very easy to work with. So there's one other trick that you're going to perform on this integrand. And it's a trick that you're going to start seeing a little bit more and more. And I always tell my students that if a trick in mathematics is seen or used two or three, four times, it no longer becomes a trick. It becomes a tool. So let's take this negative 10x and write it over x squared plus 5. And notice that the negative is just going to work out in front as a subtraction. And then I'm going to add my 5 in a totally separate fraction over the x squared plus 4. Now, boy, would you like some motivation about why on earth did we do that? That's a great question. And the reason is because if we left this fraction here that I'm indicating intact, we would not have been able to integrate it in that form. But if we separate it, we're going to be able to use a u substitution for this, which we're probably getting pretty good at because we've been doing a lot of u substitution lately. And for this, hopefully you recognize that as an inverse trig form that we've already talked about. So there's still a lot going on. All right, let's go to it. If we integrate 3x, there's your break. That's an easy one, right? You're going to get 3x squared all over 2. And you can write that so many different ways. 3 halves x squared, 3x squared over 2. We really don't care. Now, for this piece here, maybe I need to do a little work off to the side if you're still not quite comfortable with u substitution. But you're going to let u be the denominator, the derivative of which is going to be 2 times x swing your dx over, and basically we have what we wanted, right? We wanted this x to show up, and it has. We aren't real fired up about that 2, but remember we can fix that by flipping it upside down, putting it out in front. However, there's already a 10 out in front. Once that 10 is divided by that 2, we're going to end up having 10 over 2 in front. And then Basically, we just have the integration of 1 over u du, right? This is going to be one of those natural logarithm forms. All right, as far as my next piece is concerned, let's move my camera out of the way. 
in this 5 over x squared plus 4, well, it's pretty clear that we have a 5 that's coming out in front. We can make that clear right now. But this x squared plus 4, we're going to think of that as u squared equaling x squared and a squared equaling 4, right? By this time, we need to have recognized that this is an arctan. So u would be x and a would be 2. Because u is x, you really don't have to mess around with this step. Basically, we know that du and dx are interchangeable. When you get to this stage, really all that's left to do is write your answer. And the answer for an arctan form has a 1 over a in front. Remember, arctan has the 1 over a. And then we write arctan of u over a which is x over 2. I'm going to put that plus c in here later because as you can tell I've got one more little thing here to integrate and I'm going to take care of him and this is really going to be our last step. Remember you can write that 3x squared over 2 any way that you would like. Subtract the 10 over 2 is certainly as 5. The integration of 1 over u is natural log of the absolute value of u. I know that our u was x squared plus 4 my camera's kind of in the way, but my u was x squared plus 4. If you wanted to do without the absolute values, if you wanted to live life on the wild side, hey, sometimes math teachers like to do that, you can do away with them since you know that x squared plus 4 is going to be positive, but there's no harm in keeping the absolute values there. And then, of course, 5 halves arctan of x over 2 is going to round this thing up. And then finally, we can put our plus c. Now, I don't do this often, but I'd like to in this video just very, very briefly take you over to the Inspire. There's no need for you to um, compute this. And I know my screen's a little bit wonky because I just need only this part of the uh, of the, the scratch pad displayed. But remember, the shortcut to do a derivative is Shift Plus, um, and then you can hit the backspace if you're using the TI Inspire uh, CAS calculator, you can compute an indefinite integral, and that's what we're doing. We're going to get our fraction template with control, divide, and then the numerator, 3x to the third, I believe it was, yep, plus 2x plus 5, and the denominator was x squared plus 4, and don't forget your little with respect to x, and you should take note that this answer matches perfectly what we have on paper, except some things are in a slightly different order. Um, they use a little bit different notation for their arc tangent, and of course they don't have the plus C. But hey, we got the answer right. That's a good feeling, right? That's got to be a good feeling. <laughs> After all that work, would be pretty mad if we had the answer incorrect. All right, we do have another one of these in part B. As you can see, I'm going to go through this one probably a little bit faster. I know some of you might be watching the video um, at like a a higher speed, so I probably sound like uh, Alvin, Simon, or Theodore at this point. Let's go ahead and take a look here. First of all, the numerator is a degree higher than the denominator, tailor-made, long division. So we're going to plop down our numerator, and as I do that, I take note of the fact that there are no missing terms. This one's all intact. That will be divided by the denominator, which is x squared plus 5. All right. Now, I know that I probably should have put a 0x there just to organize myself a little bit. No harm done. I can go back and do that. Some kids can get by without putting those 0 terms in. As long as you line up your like terms, you're OK. x squared goes into x cubed x times, x to the first. So I'm going to multiply through. This is x cubed plus, there's what I meant about lining up your terms, 0x squared plus 5x. Long division requires that we subtract. And notice that we have 3x squared plus 3x. And you're going to go ahead and bring down this plus 19. Even if you didn't think you needed to, by the time you start working with the division, you'll see that that was going to be something that uh, was required. Now, unlike example 1a, we actually can perform another division step. In other words, we can see x squared will still divide evenly into 3x squared. x squared times 3, in fact, would be 3x squared. So we're going to write that. We'll multiply 3 times 0x. We get 
0x, and 3 times 5 is 15. We subtract, and the result is positive 3x plus 4. That's going to be serving as our remainder, so to speak. But remember, we don't write it as a remainder. Rather, we write it as the sum of a new fraction where that serves as our numerator and the divisor serves as our denominator. So here we go. We can finally go into full-blown integration mode. So what we're going to integrate is x plus 3, which, hey, those will be pretty easy, plus 3x plus 4 over x squared plus 5. Now, if you're interested, if you haven't thought about this yet, this would be a great time to pause the video and see if you can work this out, and then maybe fast forward to the end and see if your conclusion matches my conclusion. But essentially, we're going to integrate each of these pieces, and just like the last problem, we have that same uh, uh, situation where this fraction has to be split apart. We're not going to have any luck trying to integrate that in its form as it stands. So if we write the 3x over the x squared plus 5, that's going to be a u sub problem. And if we write 4 over x squared plus 5, that's going to be an arctan, albeit with an ugly a value. We apologize for that. All right, so a lot of similarities between this problem, part a and b. And we wanted to make these problems similar so that you got that extra at bat so that you can practice this technique. All right, here we go. Switching to blue ink. Integration of x is x squared over 2, of course. The integration of 3 is 3x. Here's our u sub. I'll go ahead and do this off to the side. u is x squared plus 5. The derivative of that is 2 times x. Swing your dx over. And we're in that same situation before. We have the x that we need. We're not real happy about this 2, but we can fix that by flipping it upside down as a 1 half. But this 3 is a constant that's going to come out in front anyway. And now this just becomes the integration of 1 over u. Now I'm going to do something with you. I'm going to push you here a little bit. You know, Normally you're at this point here when you have, have gotten this far with u substitution, that if you can recognize that this is a 1 over u integration, you could just go right into the answer. Natural log of the absolute value of x squared plus 5. Oh, I didn't write absolute values again. Well, again, living life on the wild side, we don't need absolute values since x squared plus 5 is guaranteed positive. All right. If that bothers you a little bit, go back and look at part A, and you can see it has a very, very similar kind of vibe to it. And now for the third fraction, this one is the one I was a little bit worried about because the u squared is x squared. The a squared is unfortunately not a perfect square. Hey, it happens. We don't live in a perfect world. So a is going to be the square root of 5. All right. Recognize this is an arctan form. Uh, that's probably a skill that's slowly developing. I will tell you that skill will develop fast if you make flashcards or use Quizlet to review those formulas. Four out in front, the square root of five is simply going to be uh, the one over a. And I'll tell you what, I did not plan very well here because I'm going to run into my work, so I'm going to move that up. And now we have our arctan of u over a. And we've spent so much time on this problem, I am not going to even think about trying to get a common, I'm sorry, a rational denominator. That's very overrated. You do not have to multiply by square root of 5 over 5. Folks, that's it. There's your long division. It's just something that takes just a little bit of effort, just a little bit of work. You've got a few of these on your skill builder. Practice them, and I promise you're going to get better all the time. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.